The year is 2009. Brazil is booming. The Economist magazine predicted that the country's economy would soon leapfrog Britain and France to become the fifth largest in the world. And Rio de Janeiro just won hosting privileges for the 2016 Olympic Games. The whole country is celebrating. Let's fast forward seven years and see how that panned out. Hint, it's not great. Brazil is facing its worst economic and political crisis since the 1930s. President Dilma Rousseff was impeached in May. The games are 51% over budget, and at least 4,200 families have lost their homes due to Olympic construction. In short, Rio is close to bankruptcy, prompting the governor to declare a state of financial emergency in July. That means delayed salaries for civil servants, including police officers, who say they won't be able to adequately protect the city during the games. Meanwhile, crime rates are surging, and the city has seen a 135% increase in officer-related deaths in the run-up to the Olympics. Brazil's answer? Deploying 85,000 armed soldiers and police, twice that used in the London Games four years ago. Then there's the health issues. For starters, Rio's water is filled with raw sewage. Yep, the very water where athletes will be swimming and boating. The Associated Press found levels of disease-causing viruses are 1.7 million times what's considered highly alarming in the United States. And a group of Brazilian scientists have recently detected drug-resistant bacteria. And we haven't even gotten to Zika, the mosquito-borne illness linked to serious birth defects. While the Centers for Disease Control said it's unlikely the Olympics will increase global risk, Half a million people are estimated to flood into Rio, and a lot is still unknown about the virus. During the Olympics in Brazil, 10,500 athletes from over 200 nations will compete in 28 sports for a chance to win 306 sets of medals. But what happens after the torch goes out and everyone leaves? <laughs> 